All right, so AI has officially crossed the point of no return. It is now being regulated by governments, adopted by the film industry, and being talked about to the broadest of audiences. Once this happens, there is no turning back. Let's get into it. All right, so first off, Time Magazine announced their person of the year this week. And instead of it being a single person, they picked the architects of AI. You've got Zuckerberg, Lisa Su, Elon Musk, Jensen, Sam Altman, Demis Hassabis, Dario Amode, and even Fei-Fei Li from World Labs. So I can already think of a few other people that should probably be here. But the fact that the person of the year is the architects of AI just shows how mainstream this is becoming. Another sign of how mainstream AI is becoming is Sam Altman making an appearance on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. I mean, this really seems like the moment. One of the first questions Jimmy asked him was literally, what is ChatGPT? That tells you how new this still is for most people, even though it's already everywhere. And here was one of the more funny, or maybe dystopian moments from the show, depending on how you look at it. Check this out. And do you use ChatGPT when, when raising your baby? I, I, I do. I, I, I mean, I feel kind of bad about it because we have this like genius level at everything, intelligence, sitting there like waiting to unravel the mysteries of humanity. And I'm like, why does my kid stop dropping his pizza on the floor and laughing? Like, yeah. yeah. You know? And so I feel like I'm not asking a good enough question, but it is... I don't, I cannot imagine having gone through that, like figuring out how to raise a newborn without ChatGPT. Clearly people did it for a long time, no problem. Yes. But, <laughs> yeah. so, so I know it, it like did. it's- And right after that, you've got President Trump signing an executive order aimed at protecting American AI innovation from state level regulation. This is something he's been pushing hard for. His argument is that letting every state regulate AI differently would slow things down raise costs, and fracture progress. As he puts it, we have to be unified. China is unified. Now, at the exact same time governments are stepping in, some of the biggest cultural institutions are making their move too. It's kind of like a one-two punch. This week, OpenAI announced a partnership with Disney, including a reported $1 billion investment and access for OpenAI's models, like Sora, to generate Disney characters. So this is actually a big deal, because if a company like Disney is partnering with an AI company, it's like Hollywood finally giving in. They finally accepted that this was inevitable. And just to reiterate, OpenAI users will now be able to generate Disney characters in their scenes using tools like Sora. And in return, Disney is taking a billion dollars in equity in OpenAI. What makes this even more interesting though, is the fact that in the same week, Disney also sent Google a cease and desist for generating Disney characters with its AI. That means only OpenAI can generate Disney characters now. And I just think that sets an interesting precedent for deals in this space moving forward. And while we're speaking of OpenAI, they recently ended their vesting cliff for new employees. Meaning you no longer have to work there for six months before receiving equity. New hires now get stock options immediately. So this is yet another signal that the race is heating up and that the stakes are only getting bigger. Now, we've talked about governments stepping in, entertainment companies licensing it, and the talent wars accelerating. But let's zoom in for a second and look at the real world progress that's actually driving all this. This week, Google rolled out Gemini's live speech-to-speech -speech translation as a beta experience in the Translate app. And the wild part is, it works with any pair of headphones. Okay, donc, comme je le disais, le modèle Gemini okay. fait maintenant so, la traduction as I was vocale saying, en direct. The Gemini model now does translation live. Avec n'importe quel écouteur. It works on the Google donc, Translate app with any headphones. As you can hear, I am being translated in real time. Let's see what it's like when I ask for advice for my next trip for my colleagues. Let's go. So yeah, if you think about it, language has always been one of the biggest barriers between people whether in travel, in work, in education, or just in daily life. And as that barrier starts to disappear more than it ever has before, it quietly changes all of those areas, especially for people who speak less common languages or live in parts of the world where English isn't the default. But even with the incredible progress we're seeing on a week-to-week -week basis, 
There's still real disagreement among the people building these systems about what this technology actually is and where it ultimately tops out. Yan LeCun, Meta's now former chief AI scientist, has long been saying that LLMs aren't going to take us to AGI. But in a recent interview, he went even further, arguing that LLMs don't have any underlying intelligence at all and that they're essentially just manipulating language in ways that feel intelligent to us. Just take a look at this. We keep getting confused about the fact that it's not because machines are good at a certain number of tasks that they have all the underlying intelligence that we assume a human having those capabilities will have, right? We're fooled into thinking those machines are intelligent because they can manipulate language. And we're used to the fact that People who can manipulate language very well are implicitly smart, uh, but we're being fooled. Uh, now, they, they're useful, there's no question. Um, you know, we can use them to do what you said. I use them for similar things. Great, they're great tools, like, you know, computers uh, have been for the last five decades, five decades. But let me make an interesting historical point. Uh, and this is maybe due to my age. Uh, there's been generation after generation of AI scientists since the 1950s claiming that the technique that they just discovered was going to be the ticket for human level intelligence. You, you see declarations of Marvin Minsky, Newell and Simon, uh, you know, uh, Frank Rosenblatt who invented the perceptron, the first learning machine in the 1950s, saying like within 10 years we'll have machines that are as smart as humans. They were all wrong. This generation with LLM is also wrong. I've seen three of those generations in my lifetime, okay? Uh, so, you know, it's, it, it's just another example of being fooled. So I'm curious what you guys think of this. And like, I understand what he's saying. Just being able to use and manipulate language doesn't automatically mean something is intelligent. But at the same time, when you start combining large language models with things like long-term memory, continual learning, and real-world feedback, which is all very much on the horizon, I don't think he's going to be saying this stuff any longer. Now, finally, to wrap up this week's AI recap, there's one more story that fits this bigger theme really well. XAI announced a partnership with the government of El Salvador to pilot Grok in parts of the country's education system. So this is interesting for a couple of reasons. First, smaller countries can move faster since they have fewer legacy systems. And they're also often more willing to experiment with new technology at scale, which means the next phase of AI adoption might not roll out first in the US or in Europe, especially not Europe, but in places that are willing to test it early, like El Salvador. Over the next two years, they'll be deploying Grok across more than 5,000 public schools delivering personalized learning to over 1 million students and empowering thousands of teachers as collaborative partners in education. So this will definitely be something to keep an eye on. This is pretty much the first large-scale implementation of AI for education we've seen. And I just hope we get some good results from it and that other countries start paying attention. I have said this before, but I genuinely think personalized education powered by AI could be a game changer for so many obvious reasons. I mean, people just learn faster and more effectively when they have one-on-one -on -one support. And now imagine a tutor that never sleeps, adapts to your exact level, and can help explain anything in as many ways as you need. If this is done right, the upside here is massive, almost unimaginable. Anyways, that's all for this week's AI Recap. I'm curious what you guys think about all this, especially the Yan LeCun take and the education angle. Also, quick heads up, I'm going to be out of town for about a week or so, but I've got some videos already queued up, so if I'm not covering every single update in real time, that's why. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button to support the channel, and I'll be catching you guys in the next one.